Hi there, I'm Professor Benson, and I thought I would record a short video on, or hopefully a short video, on how to merge data sets within Stata. Uh, being able to merge data sets is an extremely important thing to be able to do if you're going to be dealing with large data sets, if you're going to be doing any type of um, research in the social sciences. Um, you really, once you're past a certain point, it is really just not correct just to enter in your data by hand. And you'll find this is especially the case when you're dealing with large data sets, it's impossible to enter all your observations in by hand. So what you need to do is learn how to deal with um, data that has been created by someone else and learn how to merge data sets together. Take variables from one data set and put them in together with variables from another data set to create a larger data set. And we do that through merging. Now we're doing that today in um, Stata, um, but men, you can do that in all other statistical programs that you would need to deal with, um, R or S or um, SPSS, but um, state is what we're focusing on in this particular course. Now I'm going to be looking at two different data sets um, that are both from UCDP. I'm going to be looking at the armed conflict data set and the battle rate of related deaths data set. And these two data sets are some of the most well used data sets on um, civil wars in the, um, you know, comparative politics, international relations, political science, literature, in general, so very usable data sets. And they're nice examples, because they have the identical um, key variables across data sets. That is when we're merging data sets um, in political science, we normally have a cross sectional component and a temporal component. Um, so that cross-sectional component can be something like a conflict or a state within the US or a country or a region. And the temporal component can be a year or a month um, or a decade. Uh, but most normally within um, international relations and comparative politics, the um, cross-sectional unit is something like the state or the conflict or a dyad, a pair of states or a government and a rebel, for example, that's another type of dyad. Um, and the temporal unit is most often either the year or the month. Um, dealing with kind of generalized data sets. There's many more super duper interesting data sets um, that deal with like specific locations. And um, for those, that's a that's an issue for kind of another day. So for the moment, we're dealing with um, two data sets that have the same unit of analysis, the same cross section and the same temporal unit. The cross sectional unit we're looking at is the conflict and the temporal unit we're looking at is the year. So let's go ahead and look at these um, data sets. Now, how did I find out which data sets I wanted to use? Well, I did some research. Um, I read some of the published literature on the topic that I was interested in, and I found that these data sets were really well used and they would be a really good basis for the research that I wanted to do. Okay, so first what I do is I read about other papers that have used this research, this these data sets and how they've use them. And then most importantly, I go to the code books to see how these data have been coded and how particular the meaning of the particular variables. Okay, so the first data set that I'm interested in is the armed conflict data set. So let's look at the code book. That's the most important thing when you're considering looking at a data set, you see how these data have been coded. A code book will always tell you what or should tell you that what the unit of analysis is. Um, the names of important key variables, the names of substantive variables, how the substantive variables are operationalized, um, definitions of important terms. So this one talks about what a definition of armed conflict is, um, what they mean by armed conflict. Um, it tells you, for example, the variables in the data set, um, what the unit of analysis is. So in this case, it is the conflict year. Um, each conflict is listed in all years where fighting in one or more dyads caused at least 25 battle related deaths. And then we talk about um, the um, look at the variables. So the variable that I'm interested in, my main cross-sectional variable is going to be the conflict ID. I see it is an integer. It is a numerical variable. Um, so this is the UCDP conflict identifier. Um, and then there's a number of other variables um, that also help me identify a particular conflict and the type of conflicts. And then the um, 
another other I mean, cross-sectional variables. And the temporal variable that I'm interested in is the year as well. That is an integer variable. And I learned that this data ranges from 1946 and from until 2019. Okay, so let's go look at the other da data set that I want to merge into this data set or merge with this data set. I'm also interested in the battle related deaths data set. I can see that they use, they have these data at a couple different units of analysis. One is at the conflict level, one is at the dyadic level. Okay, let's go to the code book. I'm interested in the conflict year um, level data, as I mentioned before. This as well, very nice code book, um, tells me everything that I need to know about the data, the definition of what a conflict is. Once again, it's the same definition of a conflict, so that's very useful for me. Um, what um, battle-related deaths are, um, what the different variables mean, there's different estimates they have of battle-related deaths, and the um, key variables that I would use to merge them by, the conflict ID, um, variable, which is the same as used in the other data set it as well. It's an integer variable. Um, and then for my temporal key variable, the year. Okay, so when we see this data set ranges from 1989 to 2019. So there is a temporal overlap between these data sets. I can merge these data sets together. The first of these data sets has more observations, more time periods. So um, that means I will have excess observations from the first data set and the only date observations that would be in common would be those that would be for the same temporal period from 1989 to 2019. Okay, let's go ahead and um, download these data. We're going to see if this um, works. I tried this a moment ago and it was a little bit slow for the video, but I'm going to give it a shot here. If not, I've already downloaded them in another file on my computer and we'll just go right to that. So I'm going to see if I can download the um, Stata data for you here. Uh, if it works. Nope, extremely slow once again. Okay, so we're not going to wait for any of this to download, but what I would do is I would go here, download the this data set to a file on my computer. I would go down to the battle related deaths. I would download this version uh, to my computer. Um, my web uh, Connectivity seems to be a little bit slow right now. So I downloaded the Excel versions um, to files in my computer. So I can show you how to import the Excel versions and into Stata and then how to merge the data sets. Okay, so let's go ahead to um, Stata. Whoops, let me see. Let me open up Stata. There we go. Back to Zoom, okay. Share, whoops, screen sharing, stop share. Let's try this one more time. Um, share screen, and there we go. Now I can see my Stata. Okay, um, so I was playing around with this a little before. You can see some of my prior commands. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up um, the first data set. So I'm going to import an Excel spreadsheet, which I mentioned I already downloaded. I'm gonna browse, I'm gonna find that. Okay, so first I'm going to look at the battle-related deaths data. Uh, my first row is variable names. That sounds good. I'm gonna go ahead and import that data. Okay, looks like there's a bunch of variables there. Let's look at the data, make sure it makes sense. Okay, good. I have a nice numeric conflict ID variable there. Everything in black, numeric. Any of the other variables are interested in, all black and numeric. Excellent. I am going to look at what these data look like. Absolutely, once again, numeric. The temporal range is from 1989 to 2019, as I expected. Okay, and I see I have 1,283 observations here. Good. Now to merge data sets together, we need to first make sure all of the key variables are sorted identically in the same um, order. So to do that, we just type in sort. I do my first variable, the cross-sectional variable, and then the temporal variable. So sort conflict ID year. And then I need to make sure the, this data is saved. This sorted version is saved. So I'm going to save as, um, I'm going to save this as the UCP battle-related deaths sorted data. Okay. 
So I'd actually already done this before. So the name was already in there, but I just type in UCDP BRD sorted. And there we go. I'm saving this data. Okay, I'm going to replace it with my old data set. Okay, so those data are saved. Now I want to open my other data set. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and clear this data. Now this data, other data set that I'm going to be opening, import the Excel spreadsheet, the armed conflict data set, um, is going to be the base data that I'll be using to merge um, the other data into. We call that the master data set. So I'm opening now my master data set. Okay, good. I have a bunch of variables that open there. Let's look at these data. Does it seem to make sense? Excellent. I have a bunch of conflict ID variables. Um, and let's see. I have good, my intensity variables, um, kiln of intensity type of conflict variables, all the variables that I'm interested in from this data set. Okay, likewise, I'm going to sort this data set. So sort conflict ID, whoops, ID, and then year. So those are the names of my key variables. Um, there we go. And I am going to save this as this data set that I've already saved it as, okay? But I'm gonna save it in Excel format. Save it as UCP, um, armed conflict data, sorted, okay? So I'm gonna save that. Okay, now, now what I need to do is merge my data together. Now, um, I'm telling you there's gonna be a teeny problem when I merge this data together, because I already did it, but I wanna show you what this issue is just in case you guys come up with this issue. Now, these two data sets have um, one observation per conflict year. Um, so when I'm merging these two data sets together, it's going to be a one-to-one -one merge. So that command looks like the following. To merge two data sets together, we just type in the merge command, one-to-one. -one. I type in the key identifying variables, conflict ID year, and then I type in the location of my using data set. This is the data set that I'm going to merge in. I need the exact location of the data set. The easiest way to get that is normally just to copy and paste it from where you saved it from. So Stata knows the exact path of where to find your data set. Okay, so I merge one-to-one -one conflict ID year using, and I hit return. And oops, there's a small problem. Okay, let's see what the problem is. So the type of conflict is byte in the master data, the data set that I've opened, at string four in the using data. I can specify merges force option to ignore this numeric string mismatch. The using variable would then be treated as if it contained numeric missing data. Now that is fine with me because I know these data and I know that I prefer to use the numeric version that's in the armed conflict data set. So I'm, I'm okay with keeping the armed conflict numeric data, just kind of ignoring the what is coded as string data in the using data set. So to do that, I am going to redo this command. I just clicked over right over there on the bottom left, re-entered my merge command. I'm going to do comma force. Okay. And Voila, looks like everything merged nicely. Okay, now let's look at how everything merged. Now I can see that there were 1,165 observations that were not matched. Now I knew that this was gonna be the case, right? Because I knew the master data set had a much larger temporal span than my using data set. And actually here we can see here, all of the ones that were not matched were from the master data set. Why? Because they didn't exist in the using data set, okay? So you all always have to be very careful in identifying why data were not merged together. If it's for a reason like this that you expect that you understand, great. If it's for some other reason that you don't quite understand, you need to figure out why it is. Sometimes some observations were able to merge and other ones were not, okay? So in this case, every single observation that was in the using data set was merged into the data set. That's what I expected. But if you see a lot of these in both cases, 
and from the master and the using, and you're not quite sure why, you would want to make sure that there was a good reason for that. And I can see that 1,280 observations were matched. That's exactly what I, what I expected, right? We know that the using data set had that many observations. They're all nicely, nicely merged in. So this information is in right here, this merge variable. Now, I always like to keep this merge variable in my data set. So, however, you cannot merge an additional data set into this now combined data set that I have with when there is this underscore merge variable in existence. So what I always do is I rename that merge variable. So I'm renaming underscore merge into merge armed conflict battle related deaths. Okay, so now I have a nice variable there that I can always go back and look at if I want to figure out you know, what merged between two data sets if something was kind of funky. Now what I need to do is I need to save this merged data set. So I am saving this as the armed conflict BRD data set. There we go. I have both the names of both the data sets in there and I've saved it. Now let's look at my data one more time. So there's the conflict ID, voila. Okay, and it's gonna look, there we go. Okay, so I can see here, it's gonna start to look a little bit strange in a bit though. Um, from 1946, great, you know what I mean? I have um, all the variables that I want. Now what's gonna happen when I go over to the new variables that have been added in, none of the battle related death um, variables are there. Why is that? It's because it's before the time span, right? Um, that this data set starts to begin. I need to go all the way down to 1989 to see those observations. Now you have two choices. You can keep all of the data in there and that is absolutely fine to do and understand that your regression or whatever you're doing will only be run on all of the data that is there across an entire row. Or you can kind of um, clean up your data a little bit, which is absolutely fine as well and delete the observations that um, are not there. So in this case, I want to drop the observations um, if year is less than 1989, okay? So I'm just keeping the observations from 1989 on. So there we go. I'm going to file, save again. So I'm gonna save this as 1989 to 2019, okay? So that's the time span for my data. And there we go. I am going to, let's look at summary statistics. And there we go. I'm back down to 1,283 observations. That's basically what I would expect, right? Just the time period from my original data set. Now let's look at our data again. We have our nice conflict ID variables. We have our nice um, string variables that tell us the location of things. And then here we go, my arm conflict variables. And then we go over here and my nice battle related desk variable. So it looks like I've managed to successfully merge two data sets together. I have saved these data sets. I also have the original forms um, saved. And um, I also have a variable save that showed me how these two data sets were merged together. Now I can use this data set right here as the basis as a master um, data set to merge in additional data sets. So you can keep doing this and doing this and doing this until you build a data set with as many variables as you need. Um, so I hope that um, this has been helpful for you um, and that you can start learning to merge data sets on your own. It's oftentimes one of the um, most time consuming parts of a research project. And there's oftentimes a steep learning curve associated with it. So um, don't get discouraged, just keep um, plugging away. But um, welcome to uh, the wonderful and exciting world of research and data analysis. Okay, bye-bye.